to Ghostwood, the Twin Peaks podcast. I'm Charles Skaggs, one of your co-hosts, back in the basement of solitude, because apparently uh, Ghostwood Forest has been closed due to the coronavirus, as you might expect. And of course, with me is my wonderful co-host, who's making me smile and cheering me up in this rather dark, dark time we live in, uh, Zan Sprouse. How you doing, Zan? I'm doing good, Charles. I I, uh, I think it's now the basement of quarantine. Yes, the basement. It's where you are right now. <laughs> Hopefully the basement of non-coronavirus. How's that? <laughs> Seriously, yeah, the basement of the... non-contamination. The basement of social distancing. Yeah, there you go. The basement. I like that a lot better. Yeah, basement the basement of social distancing. The basement of social distancing. That's good. The, yeah. B- the BSD, as we call the it. BSD. Ooh, that is so close to BSDM. <laughs> Just one letter away. I don't know. I can see his basement, you guys. It's just comic books. Don't worry about it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Of course, they're on latex. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Oh, yeah. They're all bagged and boarded. That is kinky. (laughs) Well, you know, over here is the dungeon room. Oh, he's in. (laughs) Nice. All right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm here in the uh, music room of quarantine. There you go. Because honestly, you know, aside from the fact that I'm not, you know, going out to play pinball a couple of times a week. It's kind of my normal life because I, you know, I work at home. Chris right. works at home, and so I, I, uh, I've decided that uh, right now, even though I still kind of suck at initiating social things, this at least will give me some time to not feel guilty about that. Right, but yeah, and, and like we were talking about before we started recording, uh, this is great for podcasts, right? You know, yeah, and and especially if you're like, oh, hey, you're introverts like us that just. What, oh, wait, I get to stay at home and uh, just hang out and talk over the computer. and Exactly. And, you know, recon- Again, a part of our life that is not that different right. because of this pandemic. This, is, so. this, this was made for our generation. Seriously. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is made for the cynical Gen Xer. Exactly. Who just, you know, loves people but wants to stay the hell away from crowds. <laughs> so, so if you're one of us. Uh, welcome to the podcast. And here at episode 71, we're going to talk about, I should do this right off the bat. Do it. Let's rock. That's going to be our episode because we're going to be talking about Twin Peaks, The Return Part 12, a.k.a. Let's rock. And uh, but before that, I do want to talk about really quickly, since we we're talking about the coronavirus, I should mention and I'm sure a lot of you out there listening to this podcast probably already know this, but in case you didn't, and in case you're one of the people with a lot of money that could afford to go to this, uh, the Twin Peaks 30 official fan celebration was postponed. Mm-hmm. Big shock, right? Big shock, yes. Because they originally this was supposed to be held held at Elvis Presley's Graceland. You know, Graceland, Graceland, going to Graceland. In Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis, Tennessee. So break out that Paul Simon classic. And Heck this was yeah. a, this was originally supposed to be on April third through the fifth. Yeah, that's I, not gonna happen. No, not gonna happen, I don't think. And now it's postponed until October thirtieth through November first. So oh, essentially wow. so essentially now you would be able to spend Halloween with your favorite Twin Peaks celebs. That's in, pretty in, badass, in, I have in, to say. In Graceland. So yeah. it's still on at the moment, just rescheduled. Yep. So hopefully by October, we're out of this. Fingers crossed. But we'll see. So I just thought I'd mention that. That would be nice. And, That'd be you good. know, and st- I wasn't planning on going because, hey, it costs a ridiculous amount of money. But, you know, yeah. hey, hey, if you know, if you want to, you know, put together a, you know, a nice little, um, you know, uh, 
GoFundMe f- to send ghost, go. ghost wood to uh Hey, to you know, Grace, if we get that land. If we get that twelve hundred dollar stimulus, yes, there you go. That's what we can spend it on. There you go. Definitely. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> there you go. So fingers crossed, we can use that. So uh, we're going to stimulate the uh, Twin Peaks uh, Graceland economy. I guess I don't know. Nice. But anyway. and in the meantime, we can just watch uh, Kyle McLaughlin doing cooking videos on Twitter. Oh, is that what he's doing now? Yeah, he's doing some cooking stuff. It's very adorable. <laughs> and like I said, he's got like brown hair. Like he has dyed hair. So. Yeah, what's up with that? I know. I I'm going to be really. Is, I mean, I, I he might be doing it for some other TV show. So we got. I know, and I'll be really disappointed if he is. But still, I'm holding out. I'm holding out hope. Yeah, yeah. We we kind of talked about that before. That yeah, you know, there seem to be a lot of curious developments. You mm-hmm. know, just little random things that you know, if you kind of you now, if you wanted to kind of knit a pattern together, you could. Yeah. But, you, uh, you know, that's what fans do, I guess. So That's we, what we do. I know that's do. what we do. Exactly. Especially when we're, you know, stuck at home with the coronavirus and don't really have all that much else to do. So, yeah, especially since you can't, can't, uh, can't do pinball. So can't do pinball. All we can do is drink, Charles. Yep. So, uh, um, so, so uh, hooray for alcoholism, I guess. I don't pretty know. much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, tonight during podcast, I will be drinking the Enter Night Pilsner that has been in co- made in collaboration with Metallica. Yeah. Which, you know, is hilarious. <laughs> now, if you had said Metal Lock Lips, I would have thought that would have been even more awesome. But that would me. be so, oh, man, that'd be so good. The problem, though, is probably has Dr. Roxo on the on the can. <laughs> and that would be really terrifying. I do cocaine. Yeah. I hear it's somebody's birthday. <laughs> I love Dr. Roxo, the rock and roll how can, how can you not love Dr. Roxo? <laughs> He's so great. <laughs> That's hilarious. But um, so, yeah, uh, other than that, though, uh, we got Twin Peaks The Return Part 12 to talk about. Yeah, we do. Unless there's something you know going on before you want to talk about before we get started. No, knock on wood. Uh, all of the celebrities who are testing positive for Corona have not gotten horribly sick right. or died or anything. So because if, I... if Tom Hanks had died, you know, there would, you know, I, I think society would have completely broken down. That's the seventh seal. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, he, he was Robert Langdon. And, you know, so, uh, you know, maybe yeah, that, that would be kind of his, up his alley, I guess. A yeah. little bit. I, I, I did think it was funny. Somebody somebody said that as any, uh, you know, somebody thought it was funny that he is trapped on an island with Wilson. Yeah. Well, they, they, they <laughs> did you see that photo of apparently the um, the the doctors treating him or whatever? They rolled in a volleyball that they marked up. Oh, and so there's like a picture of him with that volleyball as like a Wilson volleyball. Oh, that's amazing. So it's out there if you want to check that's, that out. I thought that it was pretty so I thought funny. it was pretty funny. So That's so great. All right. So fortunately, I mean we have seen some fatalities which is horrific, but right. there's nothing Twin Peaks related that I feel like we need to bring up. The only thing I want to say Yeah. Knock on is, wood, guys. Knock on knock on wood. Yes. The only thing I want to knock say on, knock is knock on your four mica tables. Yeah, for it, it, green is it's, its color. color. Yeah, but I just want everybody to stay safe, stay six feet away from each other. Yes, stay in touch through text and Skype and email and social networking and whatever, and act like you have it and you're trying not to spread it rather than you're trying not to get it. Yeah. So think of it that way. Um, one thing that my husband brought up the other day is you know also. If you're staying inside, you're not taking a ton of risk, so you're not going to the hospital with, like, physical injuries. Right. So I think that's that's good advice. But everybody, please stay safe. And don't listen to anybody but scientists and doctors. If anybody tells you to, I don't know, just willy-nilly take the chemical that cleans fish tanks and see if that helps, <laughs> don't listen. Take anything, any sort of drug regimen you do, do it under the supervision of an actual licensed physician. Please only listen to scientists and doctors who are licensed and credible. Thank you. Exactly. So that's uh, all I want to say. Yep. Yep. Uh, scientists over yeah. politicians. Let's just put it that way. Scientists over politicians who economy over people. Exactly. And I get it. Okay. We are, we are a capitalist nation. Our economy is our lifeblood, but oh my God, we have no economy if we have no people. 
especially okay. especially politicians desperate to not to get reelected so they don't have to get indicted by the state of New York. Right, because that's what's going to happen. Yeah. It so better. so uh, unless you want to die for that, I wouldn't. Yeah. Recommend also, it. if you possibly can, if you're in Mississippi right now, get the hell out if you can. <laughs> Pretty much. And stay the hell away from Mississippi. Right. And if you're in Florida, stay the hell off those beaches. Yeah. Stay inside. All right. But uh, so. on a lighter note. Uh, on a lighter note, let's go to Twin Peaks. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of crazy, bizarre world are we living in that the lighter note is Twin Peaks right now? I, I think that's probably the first time those words have ever been uttered in a sentence before. Exactly. Yeah. Like, like exactly. Let, I need to cheer up. Let me put on Twin Peaks. No. <laughs> yeah, I need to feel better about something. Let's watch Twin Peaks. David Lynch will do it for me. You know what I'm seriously considering, Charles? What are you considering, Zan? Because, you know, I'm pretty much just going to the grocery and the liquor store these days to spend yeah. my money. Um, I want to do David Lynch's master class. I wonder how expensive <laughs> that is. Wouldn't know. that be cool? It would be cool. Because I know Coursera has got some stuff for free and like major discounts and stuff like that. I wonder yeah. if Masterclass is going to do that too. But do we talk about that? We've already done it because we watched all those special features and the uh, from A to Z. Yeah, I think we got the cliff's notes of his Masterclass already. So good, yeah. for, good for good for us. We we should at least have you know that should be at least the the basic level, the uh, introductory level. That's the one hundred level where you sit yeah. in a, in a in a lecture hall yeah. with like hundred other people. We're ready for like advanced. Lynch masterclass, I would think. Mm -hmm. We're ready for our capstone. <laughs> <laughs> We're ready to move up a level. Yep. All right. So everybody playing at home, uh, we're going to do our little commentaries here. So obviously we're on the black screen of death around the one minute, 34 second mark. Or if you don't have a timer after the spinny stuff. Exactly. After the spinning yeah, Chevron floor where yep. everything turns to black because my life is black and because now it's dark and now it's dark and so if everybody's ready we will let's press we'll press play in three two one doink boom three two one boink boink or is or is uh yes chuck d likes to say boing Yeah, I'm I wouldn't be I'm on just, a plane. I'm just, I'm just bummed out that he f fell out of with uh, Flavor Flav. Oh my God, they fired Flavor Flav. Right. What is that all about, Public Enemy? <laughs> How can, I, what's the? I love you, Chuck D, but you're not enough. A, sh okay? a, sh a sure sign of the apocalypse. You're not enough, Chuck D. Yeah. Who was gonna go, boy? Now. Yeah, boy. Okay, that's my official audition tape for Chuck D. <laughs> there you go. So I here. Can, uh, wear a clock around my neck and put some and I can I can have an affair with uh, Brigitte Nielsen yep on TV in who, rehab who wouldn't right right I know seriously so here's team blue rose having a little secret confab with all of Gordon's wine that he brings on his plane I'm just like I want to fly everywhere with Gordon right because I mean there's not just one wine bottle there there's just like four at least yeah yeah that's like See, and this is and, and this isn't a hotel, so they've got like their own little sec little secret, their little private room here. I know this is impressive. So, okay, so Tammy is now like having her mind blown by all of the crazy tinfoil hat stories she's ever heard about. Every con conspiracy theory with the government is actually probably true, right? <laughs> so, here we go. So this is the. This is her, where she they officially recruit her into the Blue Rose, right? Yes. The Blue Rose Task Force, which is after Project Blue Book was disbanded. Right. And, um, and you know, she gets her, like, you know, secret decoder ring and the whole nine yards. Be sure to drink your Ovaltine. Be sure to. <laughs> thank you. Son of a bitch. Ovaltine. <laughs> Chet Desmond. Yeah. And Albert, don't, don't, uh. Don't forget about uh, Sam. Yep. Don't. I know we go to Albert and don't, don't, don't yeah, go to Sam. Don't go to Sam, but. But Sam's there. Sam Stanley the glad, gives the glad hand. And we had we had this guy named Sam who was able to calculate the worth of this. So this is, this is essentially the Twin Peaks version of the X-Files group. Right. But it's a little more secret and it's a little bit more. 
exclusive. Well regarded. No, it's more well regarded because you know how the X Files Mulder's in the basement and it's just sort of where they put him to get him out of the way and shut him up. Right. But I think Blue Rose has a little bit more credibility. Yeah, I would think so. Especially, you know, with I think it's because, you know, with Denise um, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, no, it's technically no run by Mulder, so there you go. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The, you know what yeah. the what the show should have done? They should have had um Jillian Anderson in male drag. Oh my god, that'd be amazing. Right? Like to like be, to, uh, to be to be Denise's partner. Like when she was Bowie in uh American Gods. Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Thank you. She she was Thank awesome you. in that, by the way. She's always amazing. Yep. Did I ever tell you about the time I met her and I was behind this one French Canadian guy that wanted her to pretend he was kissing her? No. Yeah. Like there, we, I was getting my photo taken with, with Jillian Anderson and this guy in front of me wanted to like sort of pretend like that they were kissing and, and like all the handlers are like, you need to go. <laughs> like, yeah. it, was, it was very, very creepy. Congratulations, Tammy. You're part of the secret club. And I just, I just wanted to go up to Jillian Anderson and be like, I am so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, so Tammy oh. is. Oh, and then everything stops. You notice Diane comes out from red curtains. That means something. I'm sure it that does. Is, that is important. That's foreshadowing right there. Yeah. Now, is Tammy Preston the first woman to be part of Blue Rose, like officially part of Blue Rose? I think so. Oh, unless you count Lil, I guess. But see, that's but what the, I'm wondering about the, Lil. Is she well, we part talk, of it, well, we or is about she just whether, like a hired hand? Well, we talked about whether Lil was Diane or not. Like if D- it was see, Diane yeah. in disguise. That's the thing. It's like I feel like Diane is sort of like a junior G-man when yeah. it comes to Blue Rose, you know, if right. anything. Not official. So. Yeah, that's what you're saying. Didn't I say I was going to do my nails like that? Yeah, you did. Yeah, I should have. I should have yeah. done that. My nails are crappy, though. I have really thin nails and I keep them super short for pinball. Right. Cause if you now whack you your out. nail, yeah. If you whack your nail against a pinball flipper, it's going to break. Yep. <laughs> so I just keep them. Well, now you can take advantage of that. Yeah. So now she's going to be deputized. Yep. Because we really need your help, even though you're really kind of working against us right now. Right. And we're all suspicious of you. Yeah, we're all suspicious of you, but what's in it for me? More booze. Yeah. What do you need? More uh, airplane liquor bottles? Those little F ones? F you, Gordon. F you, Albert. Laura Dern is just priceless here. Laura Dern. Oscar winner, y'all. Exactly. Oscar winner, Laura Dern. We can say that now. We can say that now because it's amazing. I do love Laura Dern. And I always have. Oh, here it comes. Let's rock. Let's rock. Let's rock. Let's rock. Oh, boy. Meanwhile, Jerry's finally coming out of the woods. Literally. Literally. (laughs) And this is like, you know, the the It's guy in Monty Python. Oh, my God. It's totally that. (laughs) <laughs> this is my totally Michael Palin, especially when he falls down. And then he'll come up and go, it's. And now, and now every time you see that, you will not be able to not think about that. Right. You're this welcome. is me. This you're, is me you're, right now. You're welcome, Twin Peaks fans. Yeah, this is me right now during the coronavirus. Right. <laughs> Like buying bread and yeah. uh, Bloody booze Mary mix. and booze, yeah. just just all the booze. Yeah. Although with with Sarah, of course, it's cigarettes and booze because that's her steady diet. Yeah, I don't I don't smoke, but uh, yeah, this would this is yeah. me. I have yeah. I literally have a gallon jug of Tito's vodka in my house right now. Yeah, it'd be hilarious if Sarah just like you know took a big long arm and just kind of pour everything into the uh the yeah. shopping cart just clear like it off the she, shelf i like how she's disappointed that she, there's only three bottles of vodka but she's not going to slum it with the pop-off right because you know is yeah. there any cheaper vodka than pop-off <laughs> but uh-oh that by the way is from the nxt episode of merlin's shop of mystical wonders i don't think i've seen organic that. jerky y'all yep turkey jerky 
Ain't no jerky like a turkey jerky. Ain't no jerky like the one I got. <laughs> now, my friend Holly likes turkey jerky, and I just don't like turkey, so... I'm okay yeah, with that, turkey. I'm okay with turkey. I don't. I'm not. That's I, probably I, literally I prefer, what I spent at the liquor store last week. One hundred thirty-three dollars. This would be the ABC liquor store in Columbus, Ohio. If only. Oh my God! <laughs> if the ABC liquor store sold neosporin spray and bread and frozen entrees, I would never leave. No, 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 neo, no, 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 neo sporin. That's a uh, Kung Pao Enter the Fist reference for you guys. Very nice. Oh, look, they have toilet paper and bread. This this store is where you want to be, y'all. Pretty much. Although it's probably emptied out by now. Probably, yeah. The only thing left on the shelves is probably the pop-off, because I know it's an apocalypse, but I'm still not drinking well, pop-off. Thank you were, very much. Were you here when they first came? Hmm. What your, room, exactly? your room seems different. Yeah, what's going What's the and, the... and men are coming. Yeah, the, usually. Yeah, yeah. Do they have the white coats? They no, they they do that in the shower. Things can happen. Oh, and here's where we hear the creepy um, fire walk with me. So, something happened to me. And this is the thing, guys. I'm pretty sure that what happened to her. Yeah. Is that a little frog fly flew you, into her the, mouth? You mean the frog moth? The frog moth. I think she ate a frog moth in her sleep when she was like 14. Yeah. Yep. This is what kind of happens, you know, like 50 years later. I like how the liquors on this, on just on the shelf, but the Tylenol PM is locked yeah. up. So, uh, so we'll just deliver that then. So that should happened. we take that to her house? I'm not going to her house. You're going to her house. I'm not going over there. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you go do it's that. Not gonna, pretty sure it's not going to end well if I go over to her house. Meanwhile, at the Fat Trout Trailer Park, he's he's already been places. Something happened to Sarah. Nine thirty a.m. Never before! Exclamation mark! Exclamation mark! Exclamation mark! Exclamation mark! I love that they uh, made that still in, in continuity. Yeah, exactly. Sorry to wake you. <laughs> so here's Chris Cole. I don't want nobody selling their blood for food. Yep. Now, you got to respect Carl here. He's looking out for his uh, tenants. Carl is a good man. You know what? Carl would not be one of those asshole landlords that's still making people who can't work pay rent right now. He would waive the rent Pretty much. During, a, during a pandemic. You know he would. Yep. This guy kind of reminds me of, like, old meatloaf. Kind of. Yeah. You know? Only, only not so uh, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just mean like, you know, an old Marvin a day, not like an old piece of meat, like actual, oh. you know. Yeah, I, was, I, I would, know you were talking about the singer, but. every I would do every anything for love, meat love. Yeah, yeah. who's kind of gone a little bit off the deep end lately. Rent's too soon. Don't pay it this month. I don't want nobody selling their blood for food. Right. Come to, come to me and I will sell your blood. Yeah. <laughs> I used to have a boss who was like this We when I worked at the bookstore and we had a cafe. Yeah. She's like, don't steal the food. If you are hungry, come talk to me and I will buy you lunch. Right. Keep, Just don't keep your blood, Crystal. Keep your blood. Yes, sir. <laughs> no, you don't hear that very often. Wash but... your pants, Carl Rod. Yeah. You're a good man, but you need to wash your pants. Yep. He needs a good cup of, mo of good morning, America. Good morning, America. Red door. Red door. Red door. Oh, let's go play a little catch with Sonny Jim in the backyard. Uh, is this the episode where we get a gym set? Uh, I don't know if it's this is it. Is not. it this one or is it the next one? I don't remember. It's coming up because remember they talked about it. That Sonny they Jim did, did talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> God. How, how, you know, in like devoted to his uh, his character was Kyle McLaughlin there to stand there and get like, like a baseball thrown at him by a kid. I know, right? At his, at his head. That's pretty impressive. And it's I'm very sure that, Homer. Meanwhile, Ghostwood Forest. It's very it's very Homer Simpson to just get whacked in the head. Yep. Uh, and here's the Palmer House. Palmer House. Hawk's going to do a little. Uh, I'm just going to check on you know. We're going to do a little bit of a senior wellness check right now. <laughs> 
Yeah, the kids yeah. at the liquor store said you left three do- bottles of vodka behind. What's the deal with that, Sarah? So, uh, Sarah, you still got a frog bug in you. Look, huh? look, 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 fan. Ceiling, ceiling fan, yep. Ceiling fan. I saw. That's cool. Yeah. You know, I was saying to Chris last night that I'm not a huge fan of the look when guys wear two oh, earrings. Fan whooshing. Whoosh, whoosh, Hawk whoosh. is the exception. Yeah, he's, he's, he well, you know, because he's Native American, he can pull that off. I think he's just badass. And badass, too, yes. I mean, he was Tonto in the Lone, Legend of the Lone Ranger, which is a movie I actually like, by the way. I don't know if you've ever seen it. The one with the one with Johnny Depp? With Clinton, not Clinton, I think it's Clinton Spilsbury. That, uh, no, not that one, not the bad one. Okay. No, this okay. is like the one from the 80s. He was Tonto. No, I haven't, he I was haven't Tonto, seen that Yeah, he was Tonto in the 80s, Lone Ranger. Yeah, I think Clinton Spilsbury was a, okay. it came out the same year, I think, as uh, Superman 2, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, okay. The Legend of the Lone Ranger. I'll have to look that up, because I've yeah. never seen that. Yeah. I didn't know Hawk was in that. It's a very hard movie to find. Anymore. See, Isn't yeah, there's a... There's a there's a delivery kit in there that's gonna get eaten. Yeah, something in, something in the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you want to let me look at what's in the kitchen? <laughs> it's a bad story. God, now, she's good. I know that that facial expression and she's and, unbelievably good. Now you think Hawk would be like, okay, something's off, even for Sarah. Yeah, but also Hawk is smart enough to not go in that house. Yeah, he's like, screw that, man. Good yeah. lord. I'll sit. Why don't we just send Chad to do it? That's a perfect job for Chad. That's a, yeah. a ideal job for Chad. Chad, we need you to go over to Sarah Palmer's house. Yeah. By yourself. Oh. Tracking, without your without slow your gun. tracking a little bit in Calhoun Memorial Hospital. Oh boy, that's never good. Nope. Looks like uh, things are going to pick up again in Calhoun Memorial Hospital. Oh, poor Miriam. Yeah. But That's you know what? She's pretty, alive. Pretty much. And she's got somebody sent her flowers. You notice those are like blue roses on the desk there? Oh, very nice. Go away, Richard. Ooh, dirty martini. Maybe I'll make <laughs> maybe I'll make one of those later. I love me some dirty martinis. Oh, Charles, I just got an email yeah. from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yes. And it says, it's time to rock at that's, home. That's hilarious. That's awesome. I think I just think that it's time to rock is good. Now, they didn't, ask, timing you, they didn't our... ask you about Las Vegas, did they? No, they did not. They oh, my God. My friend Jen lives in Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. She said the casinos are all closed and the strip is dark. Wow. That's good. She, she said it's very creepy. That's ripe for a David Lynch film right there. Seriously. So, yeah. uh, catch up with Ben and Beverly now. Oh, Ben and Beverly. This is like the most I love that Ben still caring, has those big block I think of Ben's his ever on his desk. I love... I'm curious as to where those came from. Like, did he make those at camp? Or did Audrey make those? Or right. did Johnny make those? Or I got, I like where to did think, those come from? I like to think that that was something that Jerry whittled for him as a kid. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. That'd be you know where cool. the you know what in the days they were drooling over the babysitter. Oh yeah, Do, doing the exactly. hook doing the hook rug da- dance. You betcha. You know what? The Great Northern is like the only place in town where I don't want all the furniture. Yeah, because it's that sort of like old westy frontier cowboy type furniture, right, and I'm not right. terribly into that. That kind of so it's like the one place that kind of culturally appropriated furniture. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. And it looks like he tried to kill the only witness that saw him do it. So, yeah, nursery so... school teacher. <laughs> yeah, so, you know what? No insurance, Ben. You know what that means. Some greenbacks to the hospital. See, this is what ha- happens when you don't have proper health care, people. You got to go to Ben Horn right, you get... to help pay you for your surgery. You got to go to Ben Horn, and that's not... It's not who you want to go to, y'all. Nope. That boy ain't right. <laughs> exactly. Nice little King yeah. of the Hill reference well, there. You know. Well, you know, he's he's Tommy yeah. Hill. Hawk's name is actually Tommy Hill, so. Uh, sorry about this, Ben, we but you know, you're like the only rich guy in town. So uh, how about you know, 
it's, it's not even months. it's not in that it's he's he's a, you know he's the only reason richard is probably not in prison pretty much you know so he's got a so this is probably like an unofficial yeah. agreement like i won't throw richard in jail if you uh pay for her surgery yeah if you hear it from a friend who hears it from a friend who heard it from a friend that richard's on the run <laughs> <laughs> Poor Harry. You know what I'm going to say about Harry? Yeah. You mean Frank? No, Harry. Oh, what about Harry? F cancer. That's all I'm going to yeah, say. Yeah, seriously, right? Yeah, F cancer. Yep. And the boy's parents, uh, obviously distraught, moron. Uh, you know, you hate your kids, is, but normal this, people love their kids. This is more stuff I got to worry about. It's just more shit I got to do today. Right. <laughs> nice. No, that's a different Twin Peaks character. Yes, but that's another guy. We just we already saw him. He's, he's... he's way nicer. Yeah, he is. He helps pay for hey. stuff too. Yeah. But uh, yeah, showed up in the mail the other day. Showing off that spiffy room three fifteen key. Agent Cooper's room. I got one of those. I want one of those. I don't have one yet. I need to get one. Yeah, I've got one of those. They're awesome. I still have the... Co- uh, Cooper. I have a... Um, Cooper. Cooper. I have a... Uh, the one that's currently on my key ring is uh, American Werewolf in London. That's cool. It's the Slaughtered Lamb. Nice. And I lost my keys at Cos- I lost my keys at Costco one time. Oh, no. And I didn't know where I'd lost... I didn't know where I'd lost them. Well, it was Chris and I were together, and with keyless entry... His keys were in his pocket. I just didn't even notice. And then he w- opened the door, so I didn't even notice. And so I was calling around to places that had them because, you know, keyless keys are like $300 to replace, right? So yep. I called Costco, and I'm like, um, yeah, so I I lost a set of keys. So I'm like, yeah, I think we have a set of keys. And the, and the woman's like, it says the slaughtered lamb. I'm like, those are mine. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, what the hell is that? I'm like, it's a long story. Don't even ask me right now. <laughs> The scene is taking a really long time just to tell Frank that uh, about the room three fifteen key right now. Yeah, but it's kind of it's kind of keeping Harry in the uh, in the story, which I don't mind. Yeah, you mean Frank? No, Harry, because he's going to give the keys to Harry. Oh, okay. So, yeah, Ben says we haven't used these keys in years, so oh. I thought Harry might like to have. Oh, them. that's right. That's right. That's right. I forgot about that part. Yeah, Sorry. It kinda keeps, thank, thank you for reminding it me. It kind of keeps Harry in yeah, it kind of keeps Harry in the story, so got, got it. I don't mind it. For Harry, yeah, there you go. Okay, I got it now. Yep, for Harry. Yep. See, this is why I have Zan here to set me straight, people. That's right. Yeah. Keep, keep me in, keep me uh on track. Keep you focused. Which I definitely need right now. Need all Seriously. the focus right now. You need some focusing. So, uh, Ben, want to make out? Nah, uh, nah. I'm good. No, go home. Go home to your husband and his cancer treatment. <laughs> that's that's why I asked you instead because I don't want to go back there. Yeah, I don't. It. it, it <laughs> Nobody it wants just, to go back uh, there. <laughs> it smells like hospital in my living room. Right. Oh, jeez, Richard, you're so horrible. Smells like rubbing alcohol and death. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, Richard has a father, but he's even yeah. worse. Yeah, pretty much. And if you were any sort of grandfather, you would have done a better job. Right. Although, you can't, you I, can't I, I, I think be this a father even, figure to the bad seed. I think this is even beyond Ben's powers here. I think, I think, you know, uh, yeah, this with, is like with, the one shitty childhood that I don't think we can blame Benjamin Horn. No, for. no, no, no. This, I mean, are you, if you want to blame him for Audrey, go right ahead. But. Heck, I'm going to blame him for, 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 uh, for John. uh Johnny. Yeah. Too, you know, yep. you feel free yeah. to blame him for He's Johnny. He's inattentive too. with Johnny. Right. I'm blaming him for Johnny's crappy childhood. I'm blaming him for Laura's crappy childhood. I blame him for Ronette Pulaski's crappy childhood. Right. Right. And definitely for Laura Palmer. Yeah. Yeah. So. 
but yeah, um, but uh, yeah, I think uh, Richard is you know that's kind of beyond like that's that's a little out of his jurisdiction. You could be the perfect parent, and he'd still be a horrible person. I know, right? You know, he's half he's half demon he, seed. He could be Tom Hanks, and uh, still not Audrey a- Horn. Yeah, seriously, Audrey Horn carries the demon seed. Fear for her, right? Yep. I kind of want to see that. I still, I kind of want to see that story. That girl's medical bills. That'd be interesting. Yeah. I'm sure it'd be very depressing. We want to kind of like, kind of like in a fire walk with wheat, walk with me kind of way. Oh my gosh! Yeah. It'd be pay for all of Miriam. What's her name's? Yeah. What's her name's medical bills? Know who you're talking about? Just, Just Beverly, make that go away for me, please. Thank you. Beverly, just make that happen. Thank you very much. I still gotta get my I still gotta get my brother out of the forest, okay? I got a lot of yeah, I got he a lot still of, doesn't know where his <laughs> Yeah, I don't know where I am. He, he he still doesn't know where his car is. So <laughs> this is gonna take some time. Yeah. Now he's talking about a bike. Oh Benjamin Horn. How did you have such an idyllic childhood and grow up to be such an ass wipe? Now, here's David Lynch indulging in a nice little bit of, um, well, self-indulgence, I guess. French hooker! Yeah, yeah. So here's Berenice <laughs> Marlowe, famous French actress, uh-huh. playing French woman in the scene. Yep. And, and uh, you know she's going to be putting on a pair of red shoes. Of course she is. But she's not, though. They're black. Laura Palmer. Oh, wait. <laughs> Oh. I would. I thought even Gordon, better, I would, y'all. Even I would be if I was Gordon. I would be very nervous every time I open that door <laughs> after seeing Laura Seriously. Palmer's giant head crying. Yeah, that would be a little bit. Uh, yeah. Can you please ask your French whore to wait for us in the bar? Thank you very much. <laughs> you know something, Charles? Yes. Uh, in the last maybe ten, ten, She's... fifteen years of his life, um, Gene Wilder wrote novels. One right. of them being My French Whore. Right, was the name of, was the name of it. It was it, incredibly disappointing in my opinion. I did not like it all that much, and I was very sad that I didn't like Gene Wilder's novels. Well, there's no nothing to say that you have to like it. I know, but I just love everything else about Gene Wilder. So a lot. <laughs> very that. the big French smile. No, just a little boob adjustment. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that. you know, you gotta adjust the girls, I guess. You gotta look. You gotta look good. Yeah, you know. So make sure. Every- maybe I should start reading Gene. Maybe we should start reading Gene Hackman's uh, spy novels. Maybe I'll like those better. Trey Chic. Trey Chic. <laughs> Trey Chick. Trez Chick. Trez Chick, exactly. Like she's the, like the old French like silent movie star. She's kind of like I know she's great. She's miming here essentially. Oh, and yeah, here's here can't. I have a sad little bit of trivia about this scene. What's that? Uh, this scene is actually the final scene shot with um, Miguel Ferrer as Albert Rosenfeld. Oh, that is sad. Why did you bum me out? I'm sorry, but it is. I just I had I, th- I thought it was important trivia. Sometimes you know we have to it's very important. We have to we have to acknowledge this that this is uh, Miguel Ferrer's final shot scene. Not his final That's scene bummer. in the story, but his final filmed it's, scene. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, boom. This is where we gave the, uh, you know, the, you know, gather round for Miguel Ferrer. Oh, geez. And and I love Albert here. He's just like, is she gone yet? Can we talk now? He's like, what? What the heck? Yeah. What the actual F, Gordon? Seriously. <laughs> He's just like, ugh. He's like, oh, God. He's got that Dr. Fauci... <laughs> You know, face palm. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> yeah, the Dr. Fauci face palm. Oh my God, <laughs> at least you're not sweeping. Yeah, pretty much. And you know, oh, Lynch Gordon insisted Cole. that the scene be in there. <laughs> I have to think. Oh, yeah. What? Okay. Oh, Gordon Cole. Bring me Berenice Marlowe. 
Put her in I a mean, tight, Berenice Marlowe. In a tight red dress. She kissed me on camera. <laughs> yeah, she's here visiting a friend of her mother whose daughter has gone mm-hmm. missing. Oh, my God. Why aren't you talking about that? Right. <laughs> Tell her mother that their daughter will turn up eventually. I don't know, as a body? Jeez, Gordon, that's awfully cavalier about somebody's missing child. Right, pretty much. <clears throat> Although it is a good turnip joke. <laughs> you know, it's just bad timing is what I'm saying. It's, it's like, not Albert's, the right time. Albert's like, is this code? Albert's like, do we have to are we do are we doing? Are we doing code now? I can't tell. Are we just... Are we still doing phrasing or? It's like, oh, can we actually talk about the case now? That would be great. Thanks. Yeah. What's your problem, Albert? (laughs) Oh, we are Are monitoring Diane. Albert is busting Diane on her text messages. Yes, they're monitoring her texts. So so at least they're on to her, which is good. Yes. Yeah. Because I would have been felt really bad if they had, she was able to uh, fool them completely. Yep. Like, that would have been... At least, hey, the FBI is They're actually not... investigating. Go figure. I like to think that the members of the Blue Rose Task Force have a little bit more on the ball yeah, than really? Sam. <laughs> 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 and, I, and by Sam, I mean the rest of the FBI. Yeah, let's go to Albert. Don't go to, don't go to Sam. Yeah. And Al- Albert and his team. Don't go to Sam. And... Gordon just keeps talking about going back to his Bordeaux here. Stair fight. Don't blame me. Once you open that stair fight, once you open that Bordeaux, you don't you don't want to you don't want to close it back up. You got to drink that bottle. Yeah, got to finish it off. Yeah, got to finish the bottle, man. Albert, is that really worried about you? Oh, that is so depressing. Isn't it though? Especially now you know now, that this is the last. Now scene. that I know that this is the last right. film scene with right. Miguel Ferrer. Yep. That's really, that's <laughs> really, really sad. I need another beer now, Charles. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks for that little lovely bit of info. I thought it was important. Oh, yeah. these poor bastards. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, say goodbye to um, Warden Murphy's kid, and Warden Murphy. Yeah. 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 At work, at home, or on the way. But, you know, Chantal and Hutch are on the job. Damn it. Why didn't I get some Cheetos for this episode? (laughs) Right. (laughs) Right? Because that's her favorite snack. Ah. Chantal, you know what they call a quarter pound with cheese in Paris? They don't call it a quarter pound with cheese? No, they don't call it a quarter pound with cheese. No, they got the metric system over there. They They don't don't know know what what a quarter pounder is. They call it a Royale with cheese. Royale with cheese. You know what they put on French fries over there? No, what? Mayonnaise. They drown them in that S. I'm serious. <laughs> They're, they just freaking drown them in that S, man. You know you can go to McDonald's and get a glass of beer? I'm not talking about a poop club. I'm talking about a glass of beer. How great would that be if they did that? <laughs> I love you, honey buddy. <laughs> All right, everybody be cool. This is a hit. This is a hit. If any of you effing wardens move, <laughs> I'll execute every last mother effing one of you. Nice. <laughs> See, this is what's great. This is what I, I, I really appreciate about Zan. I just, I tee this stuff up for her and she just knocks it right to, out of the park. That's, that's my, uh, that's my job to knock him back. She, she just uh, hits a home run every time. So. Oh no, he's getting up. Got to eat some more Cheetos. <laughs> but you. I actually was Headshot. watching um ugh, good. This poor kid. This poor kid. You know what? When your dad gets shot to, oh, in the head. Next stop Wendy's. Next stop Wendy's. I love that line. Yeah. I don't know why. I love it so it's much. A, it's a great one. But it's so funny. Next stop Wendy's. Of course I would do next stop everywhere, but you know, hey, that's me. Well, you know, that's you know, you're, you're shameless self promotion machine, am. Charles. I, yep. Yes, yes I am. Just a bit of advice, kids, when your dad gets shot in the head. Oh, it's time for Dr. Amp, everybody. Stay in the house. Do you, oh, know, where do you, you know where your freedom, freedom is? is? <laughs> oh, Dr. Amp. Have you seen his tweet about the coronavirus? I did. 
It's a good. Where he's tweet. like, I am ninety years old. Stay yes. the f away from me. <laughs> right, right. Why don't you go do what Doctor Jacoby would do and stay the f home. Stay the f home. Yeah, stay in your house. Do your little video podcast. Right. Listen, doing the vamp for liberty. Oh my gosh. Climbing the ramp for justice. And lighting the lamp of freedom. And here's the freedom lamp, which is great. I love it. It's just a little light box with with, uh, Lady Liberty in it. Oh my God, I never noticed that he had a beaded seat cover on his office chair. I didn't notice that either. That's amazing. Things you notice. This is why you, you have to watch these again. You miss little details like that. And there's Nadine with her protein shake. Friends, we all live in the mud. And you know she's like, yep. she's like, it's seven thirty. It's time for Doctor Amp. Oh, he's so cute there in his little waiters. His waiters, yeah. Shovel your way out of this shit. He's so dreamy. Oh jeez. <laughs> Two coats guaranteed, y'all. Guaranteed. Oh my gosh. This is. <laughs> This is the man for me, is what she's thinking. He's telling it like it is. It's working for me, Dr. Amp. Yep, she is seriously turned on by this. $30 for that golden shovel. Charles? Right. Why haven't we made golden shovels yet? P.O. Box 479, Twin Peaks, Washington. Why haven't we done this yet? Right. We need to do this. <laughs> Two coats. You gotta, Guaranteed. Yeah. No. Seriously. Maybe I when, mean, you know, like, a, I'm, I'm guessing there's still, like, gold spray paint at hardware stores, right? Probably, yeah. I mean, we I don't stock, see how that's... stock the, up. Yeah. I, I haven't heard the president say that that'll cure anything yet, so yeah, nobody's yeah. buying it. Right. Well, you know, we have to, like, have all, all these gold shovels done by Easter so that America's economy is saved. Oh, so, so good. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Ugh. Treasonous puppets. The ninth level of hell will welcome you. Oh, jeez. Stop <laughs> spitting, Dr. Amp. Say it. Don't spray it, Dr. Amp. Yay! This is our first appearance of Miss Audrey Horn. <laughs> and here's where Zan was like, finally, Audrey. Oh, my. I Literally, I yelled out, finally! It only took, what, 12 episodes look, to get Charles, to her. Look, look, look. Look, there's another Rolodex. Right? Yeah. He, Lynch loves the Rolodex. Oh, Charlie. So, yeah. No relation, by the way. No. No, the other one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I was in uh, junior high, dickhead. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice to hear reference. I caught that. So this is Clark Middleton is Charlie, by the way. Kish Charlie, yes. Yeah. She's going to the roadhouse. Yep. Because she's looking for Billy. Whoever Billy is. Look at all this paperwork I have to do. He's got a deadline. This is pretty much every time I ask Chris to go out with me. <laughs> <sighs> look at all this look at all this drawing I have to do. That's funny. I get the same reaction from Lori. Go figure. Oh yeah, crazy. It's like I get I have to do all these, you know, stuff for the cats. Yeah. Do you see all these cats I have to take care of, Charles? <laughs> I know, right. Then you feel guilty. Then you feel guilty because you I, have like, a, I have a deadline for the cats. Yeah. Oh, Charlie. Oh. Oh Call, man. Calling out his manhood there. Did you know that? Oh my goodness. This is a. Uh, now, I, how did these two hook up? Honestly. That is an excellent, excellent question, and. Spoiler alert, because we know that this is probably all in Audrey's mind. Right. Exactly. How, who is this guy? Like, how did she show up in, like, how did he show up in her cast of characters yeah. in her subconscious? Now, I, th- I think I talked about my theory for this, um, that because this is a delusion of, of Audrey's or some kind of dream or something, that mm-hmm. maybe, because my theory was that she's actually still in the coma. 
That's my theory, too. And yep. Charlie is apparently the doctor that's taking care of her. He's either a doctor or somebody. That's I don't, my, that's my theory. Yeah. I'm just, yeah, I'm just wondering who and he's he trying is. to, because he sounds like he's trying to reach her and bring he's her He's trying back. to, and he's sort of the one talking sense to her, like, right. you know, I've got things to do. I can't go looking for Billy, blah, blah, blah. And we never quite figure out who Billy is. I would like to think it's Billy Zane, but, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> you have no balls. You have no balls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's who Billy is. Yeah, she's uh, that's Billy uh, Audrey's uh, fling on the side. Audrey's, Audrey's boy toy. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And dreams sometimes hearken a truth. What truth is this fantasy hearkening, Audrey? Please, I want to know. Oh, my goodness. Got to find Tina. Whoever, yeah, you absolutely have to find Tina. Yeah. Even though she can't stand being in the same room with her. I don't like Tina, but she knows where Billy is. You were supposed to call her, but you never did. Yeah. And, And meanwhile, we're watching this going, what? What am I? What are we missing here? We're like, there is a lot of backstory that I'm going to need. I am made of questions right now. And then you start breaking out the yarn and the murder board, yeah. going, uh, "This goes here." No murder board, murder, murder board, murder board. Murder board. <laughs> I love the murder board. Yeah, <laughs> I do recognize penises. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a very special skill. If anybody's seen Trial and Error. They think that was really funny. Yep. He's a lawful, law, lawfully wedded husband. He has rights. I'm smart. I can do things. I'm smart. Not like I'm everybody smart. says. I just wanted something for me. For one, just one thing, just for me, Mike. Renege in a contract? Mm, so what's going on? So it's almost is- like it's like an, a, a, an arrangement. Yeah, what is going on in this marriage? Right. Like I said, I am every second of this conversation brings me fifty more questions. Right. This is why we need Twin Peaks season four. This is why we need it. We, we are need... stuck in the house, David Lynch. Do this for us. Yeah, pretty much. It's like you've got the time now. You can't go anywhere. You might as well work on this. Or Mark Frost, just write another book. That's all. That'll just work. Something. Yeah, something. And devote like half of it to Audrey. At least. Devote the entire book to Audrey. Yeah, let's let's get. Of course, you'll need your jacket. Yeah. What do you think? I told you we were going out. You need your jacket. Obviously, going to need my jacket. That's a cute jacket. Do you think we're just going to walk out the door or waltz in the road to us? And then presto, there's Billy. Audrey's like you know this close to becoming Curly Howard, going. <laughs> Audrey's so angry. Angry. Audrey smash. You gotta love you gotta love Charlie too. He's just so calm. Yeah. And that's what infuriates her more is that he's so calm. Yeah. Let's call Tina now. And then maybe if we call Tina, we don't have to go to the stupid roadhouse. Right. Because I've got work to do. Yeah. I have a deadline. Do you see all this paperwork, Audrey? <laughs> just call the bitch. Let's see what she knows. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Everybody got that? Everybody getting this so far? Yeah. So we got Tina. Who are all Bi- these people? Hey, Tina, hey. Billy, Chuck. Who are they all? Well, you know, it's like random David Lynch roadhouse scenes at the end. Rando people that just, I'm made of questions. David Lynch randos. Chuck stole Billy's truck. So. Is Chuck that guy? With Richard that stole the truck? Billy called the sheriff, but he did not shoot the deputy. Billy, don't be a hero. Don't go to the roadhouse. (laughs) Oh, man. You know something, Charles? Yes. I love not living in a small town. Right. That's why I moved out of one. And now I live in a big city. 
there's just too many people in I live every in the suburb, so I kind of get the best best of both worlds now. Yeah, it's just too many people into each other's crap. I love that he's dialing a rotary phone here. Rotary phone and after a Rolodex. Up, yes. Yeah, looking up the number in his and, like. And he's got a day planner that's not on a cell phone. Yep. And an actual perfect. like you know fold out day planner. Oh my goodness. I'm so tired, Audrey. I'm so tired, and I have so much paperwork to do. He's so tired, he couldn't sleep a wink. What is this job he's doing with all this paperwork and no computer whatsoever? Well, he's doing it all on his head, obviously. Well, it makes you makes you realize that Audrey's been in a coma for 25 years. Right, and she doesn't have a like access to computers yeah. and stuff. Yeah, she doesn't know about well, it. Well, it's just she's not. Slept- it's just not. Well, she's... Yeah, it's not part of the everyday like it is back then, like it is now. Right. I mean, we had computers, but it wasn't, you know, we, we used them like every now and then. Right. So. You almost kind of expect one of those talking basses on the wall. The basses. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah in uh, Charlie's study here. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Charlie, you need to give us what's going on on the phone. Yeah. I'm feeling I'm feeling Audrey's uh, pain right now of right. not knowing what the hell he's talking about. I think a lot of us were just feeling the pain because the scene's kind of going nowhere, and we have no idea why. Well, I don't care. It's Audrey. I mean, I'll watch right. this for days. <laughs> I mean, gonna, as long gonna, as Audrey. We'll, we'll make this work somehow. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, somehow. I mean, at least at least it's Audrey that we're watching. Right. At last. That's that's the important thing to me. Oh and my I ha- goodness! But I have to think she's still in a coma. Oh, of course. Of course. After our last scene with her, she's yeah, totally exactly. still oh Yeah, because that would be the part where she wakes up and realizes, oh my God, I'm old. Not even that. I mean, she doesn't even look old when she wakes up. She just doesn't know what's going on and she doesn't know where she right. is. Right. So, but I, mean, that, I mean, it adds to the whole disorientation because, hey, that doesn't look like me. Right. Right. I look different. Yeah. I'm not used to what I look like. Oh my God, Charlie. Just... You're killing me. Come on, man. You're killing me, Smalls. <laughs> this is Audrey is feeling what we're all feeling with this series right now. Get on with it. Like, oh my God, come on. I just want to know what's going on. Yeah, I hear the dial tone, Charlie. Hold on, let me just take forever to hang up. Uh, hang up the phone. Uh, Holy uh, 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 There we go. Yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> Lynch loves this for whatever perverse reason. I think he just uh-huh. loves torturing his fans like this. Yeah, he does. It's kind of very masochistic. You're not going to tell me what she said? Or say sadistic, excuse me. Yeah, it's very sadistic. I don't know why I said masochistic, but... It's, you know... <laughs> really? After on, all that? It's bordering on psychopathy, frankly. Right. Oh, <laughs> I'm just David Lynch's David Lynch's a marriage story. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Oh, vacuuming. Oh, where, here where, we go. Is Emery Battis still alive? <laughs> <laughs> Emery Battis' son, everybody. Frosty, my little snowman. Snowman. And he just he just knows what she wants. Yep. Ugh, ugh, really? Just, yep. Just a little drinky poo. It's a miracle she doesn't set her breath on fire. <laughs> what are we searching for tonight? Mm. Those look like soy sauce bottles off to the side there. <laughs> Hmm, coordinates. Let me just take a look at uh, Don't mind me just memorizing. Oh. Don't let Diane memorize your coordinates, okay? It's not right, going to be good. Right. Okay, Google Maps. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, coordinates. <laughs> Coordin- okay, All right, how many O's in that? I don't yeah, know. Plus two... Twin Peaks or 
20 miles west of the state or south of the state border, five miles west of the state line. Yeah. I forgot what it was. Dude, Twin Peaks. Hey, that's a great name for a TV show. I'd watch that. <laughs> I think we are. Oh, Inception. <laughs> Blows your mind. <laughs> All roads lead to that's Twin that, Peaks. That's that place he told me about. Yeah. I've heard of that. Ambient whooshing. Ambient whooshing. Good thing for Jerry he's not in there anymore. I think I'm high! It's always hilarious. The evil in these woods. Ah. Oh, soft rock music playing. Aww. But it's actually the chromatics. So that's but it's o- the chromatics. That's okay. We can, let, we can let that slide, but... Because it's over. I mean, I love the chromatics, but it's sad when it's over. And then, speaking of randos, here are... what? Let's see. Natalie, Abby, and Trick. Okay. Good to know. Yeah, good to know, right? Do you really think going through the dance floor is the best way well, to trick, deliver? Well, Thanks. trick comes by later, but yeah. Yeah. It's like, can you guys just shut up so we can just hear, listen to the chromatics for a little bit? Can everybody please shut up so I can hear the rest of this thing? And this is why we bought the From A to Z set, so that we could just hear, listen to the music. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Without all this. I mean, yeah, it- you know what? I don't need to know more characters right now. I already am trying to figure right. out who Chuck, Tina, and Billy are. Right. I don't need to figure out. I think out a lot of us were hoping, well, okay, this is like, okay, is this Tina? Yeah. But no. No, it's not that linear. Sorry. Clark and Mary two nights ago. That's the last time somebody saw Billy. So is this all connected? Angela doesn't like Mary. Angela hates her too. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. They're like making out. Like practically making out. Slow dancing and get real close. Oh, yeah. Heck yeah, baby. A lot of people saw him. Angela's going to go crazy when she gets wind of this. Again, I don't. I You know, here's the thing, Charles. Yeah. I don't know if you've had this experience, you know, because you're male and males don't get this experience. But I don't know if it's the people I hang around with or the fact that I'm married, but I don't have to hear a lot of this, like, relationship drama <laughs> you know maybe we're old i don't know if that's what it is but well i had that this relationship drama but it was in my 20s yeah and, and, the, and then i kind of got married and grew up and got out that's of what it. i'm saying yeah it's like is it because we're old or because we're married or like is it a double dip that we you know get to not hear this crap well we don't really hang out with people that do this crap anymore yeah ew I'm wondering who is that? Yeah, this is trick, everybody. I know, but who's who's uh, who's actor? running him off the road? Yeah, I well, obviously Richard, right? Is it Richard or is it? Is <laughs> it should it, it should be Richard. It's probably that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking it's Richard or if, or Mr. C's on his way or I right. don't know. So lucky to be alive. Jeez, isn't he under house arrest? <laughs> Two ankle, the judge gave me two ankle bracelets. Uh, your boy's a question on the bar exam. Stop throwing these all these random facts at me. Yeah, a free man. Okay, you know what? You need to have higher standards, Natalie. Pretty much. Seriously. Meanwhile, we're just going to stare at Ruth Radlett for a little while. Meanwhile, Italians do it better. <laughs> Starring Comic Locken. Aww. Oh. oh. Over for another week. In alphabetical order. Yep. Audrey Horn, ladies and gentlemen. Zoe McLean as checkout girl. Now you know. Now you know, everybody. And knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe. Go, Joe! All right, Charles. Yes. How do we feel about this episode? <sighs> I'm just enjoying the, the chromatics. It kind of it kind of calms me down right now. No, I hear you. I hear you. I'm just kind of like in my zone right now, but um, 
This is, a, I mean, I think this is a pretty average episode. It's not horrible. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. We finally got to see Audrey. We finally got to see Audrey, so yes. So points for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though at this point we had no idea what the hell was going on. Right. Right. And we got so to see her rating for this one. Yeah, my rating is uh, eight out of ten packets of beef jerky. My rating is eight out of ten old hotel keys. Nice. And the, what I like about this episode is I don't necessarily I don't like that I don't feel like this one advances the plot all that much. Right. But it basically shows good things. It's the good side of Benjamin Horn, the good side of um, Carl Rod. You get to see Tammy Preston become part of the, the Blue Rose task right. force. She's official and we now. Get, yeah. yeah. And, you know, seven out of those eight points are because we get to see Audrey Horn again. Yeah. So. Yeah. Now, what? yeah. And obviously it doesn't advance much in the Cooper subplot because, hey. Uh, he's only in it for the scene where he gets hit on the head by he gets hit in the Sonny, head, and that's Sonny like Jim's it. baseball. But yeah. but I, th- I, I think it also does advance the whole Diane subplot. It definitely advances the Diane subplot. That's for sure. And But that's depressing to me that Diane is like a villain in this. That's yeah. sad. Yeah. And uh, obviously that's going to turn out a little di- bit differently, as we know from yep. watching before. But as, as of right now, we were just like, oh, Diane's, uh, you know... You know, she's working for Mr. C and that's not good. And what's mm-hmm. up with that? So yeah. a lot of questions. We had so many questions. So too many, many questions. Too many, too many questions. But, uh, but yeah, apart from that, yeah, I think this is a just an average episode. And um, and uh, it's it's all right. I got nothing yeah. against it. So and uh, we got to hear Saturday by the Chromatics. So that's cool. And uh, I guess that's about it. And we didn't have a dedication in this one, so hooray for that. No, no dead. Yeah, people. we didn't have to. Yeah, seriously. So, so that was good. That's always a plus on this show that we don't yep. have to talk about somebody who died. Nope, that's good. That's good times yep. for this week. All right. So, uh, anything else about this episode before we uh, get ready to uh, sign off here? Nope. No. Here's to Billy. Here's to Billy. Here's to... <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, obviously, we didn't get any uh, Gmail this week. No Gmail. So, oh, you guys, come on. You're hunkered in your house. Please exact- write to us. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, obviously, we've been off for a couple of weeks, but uh, we'd love to hear from you. And obviously, I'm pretty sure most of you have a little bit more time. So, mm-hmm. if, so if you're so inclined... We don't want to force you, obviously, but no. But uh, we're here for your social yeah. networking needs. If you want your to re- social distancing needs, exactly. So if you kind of want to, you know, reach out to us, let us know how you're doing, or just uh, let us know what you've been thinking about the podcast, or what you'd like to see on this do on the podcast. Um, drop us a line at ghostwoodpodcast at gmail dot com. The gmail. The gmail. And uh, that's ghostwoodpodcast at gmail.com. Or you reach out to us on Twitter. That's always cool, at ghostwoodcast on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Or on Facebook at Ghostwood, the Twin Peaks podcast. That would be fab of you to do that. Please, totally fab. Please like and follow us. And uh, if you want to go to Apple Podcasts, rate and review us. That would be great because that helps people find us. That's great, yeah. So that would be great as well. If you share us with your friends, if you're so inclined, we'd definitely appreciate that. Um, apart from that, uh, Zan, where can they reach you on the interwebs? I'm on the Instagrams and the Twitters as Udenax19. And I'm on the Facebook as Zan Sprouse. What about you, Charles? Well, obviously, I'm at Charles Skeggs on Twitter, at Charles Skeggs on Instagram. You can reach me at Charles Skeggs in Hilliard, Ohio on Facebook. Or my blog, Geeky Things. Damn good coffee. And hot. Damn good coffee and hot, where I talk about all the stuff we talk about here on Ghostwood, including Twin Peaks, Dave Lynch stuff, or comic book sci-fi news. Now, obviously, there's not a lot going on right now because of how our world has gone, oh, sort of pandemic, 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 ap- ap- yep. apocalyptical. But, um, you know, when the, when news comes back, uh, hopefully that'll be good. But, uh, you know, try to post updates about my other podcasts that I do for Southgate Media including uh, Next Stop Everywhere, the Doctor Who podcast, where um, Jesse and I, just yesterday, we recorded our discussion of the next Doctor nice. from the David, David Tennant era. And uh, today... Team. That's weird. Yeah, yep. 
and uh, that was uh, that was the uh, the one with David Morrissey, the governor from mm. The Walking Dead. Yeah, that one. Yes. Yeah, that and one. if you so, haven't uh, if you haven't seen Blackpool, everybody, you need to be watch. You need to watch Blackpool. I have not seen that. Oh my gosh, it's David Morrissey and David Tennant. You should watch it. Oh, I should check that out. Yeah, I've great. seen I've seen Broadchurch, but I haven't seen Blackpool. Blackpool, it's really good. And and uh uh, what's his name? The the oh, what is his name? The guy that plays Doctor. The guy that plays William Hartnell in that movie about the oh David Bra- David Bradley David Bradley yes yeah yeah Filch from, Filch um, yes he's in it too so you should totally yeah. watch it yeah David David Bradley's awesome yeah he he also played he's the one... um, the first Doctor on on the in the Peter Capaldi era oh yeah that's and, right and twice twice upon a time he actually got to officially play the first Doctor so. that's right so that's cool. Um, but uh, yeah, we've been we talked about that, and then like today we did our live tweeting of Rose, the nice. fir- first episode from the uh, new Doctor Who era that started in two thousand five. Because today is the fifteenth anniversary of New Who. Wow! So ha- run so happy happy anniversary exactly happy anniversary New Who, and uh, had a lot of fun with that. And um, so if you want to check us out, check us out on Next Stop Everywhere, the Doctor Who podcast, and. Um, Otherwise, you can check us out on Titan Talk, the Titans podcast that I do with Jesse Jackson. And uh, that's on hiatus right now, but or on Phantom Zone podcast, which is kind of sort of on hiatus until we figure out what we want to talk about. That's where we talk mm-hmm. about comic book TV shows where we, we talked about Watchmen and we did the Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover. And so now we're kind of like waiting for hopefully something good to talk about. Yeah. Speaking of Watchmen, I feel like everybody's pictures of them in their hand sewn face masks it feels like they're doing yeah, tulsa right. police cosplay <laughs> but uh have you, have you been watching watchmen oh i've i or, watched all of it I oh, you, it was fabulous. You, you watched all of it yeah, yeah. it was fantastic mm-hmm. yeah it did, it did get a little bit of a cosplay vibe but that's okay no i'm just I, saying because because the the tulsa police they cover their faces yeah, yeah i know so, it's yeah. like those yellow like you know stocking masks yeah mm-hmm. yeah it's very vibrant and stands out but uh, so yeah, you can check us out uh, for that on Phantom Zone podcast. I would definitely appreciate. It. I'm sure Jesse would too. And uh, for sure. hopefully, hopefully, we need to get Zan back on next up everywhere at some point. That'd be so awesome. So yeah, so we'd definitely appreciate that. Um, next time on Ghostwood, in case you're wondering what we're going to talk about, because hey, speaking of anniversaries, uh, speaking of anniversaries, that was a beautiful way you segued that. Um, Ghostwood episode seventy two. 30 years later, how about we talk about, we have, we've talked about the first, very first uh, episode of Twin Peaks, Northwest Passage, but uh, we haven't done our commentary for that. So, um, and we also need to talk about, hey, Twin Peaks' 30th anniversary is on April 8th, 2020. Oh my God. So, which is kind of like the day before we record. So We're just going to keep the party going. I know, exactly. So, um, obviously, with the 30th celebration at Graceland uh, going by the wayside, don't worry, Ghostwood's got your back, and we're going to do our own little 30th anniversary celebration. So, uh, so if you got any thoughts about Twin Peaks turning 30, please drop us a line, you know, however you want to. We told you how to reach us. Um, we'd love to read your uh, comments on the podcast as we celebrate Twin Peaks 30 30- year anniversary i know zan hates turning the idea of turning 30 or twin peaks turning 30 i would love to turn 30 again i'm sure i'm sure would we all yeah I'd that'd be great 30 again <laughs> at this stage yes yeah. but um but i'm sure you're not too fond of twin peaks turning 30 i just don't like to think about the fact that it's been 30 years because it feels like you know last week so right time well, is mean, a construct y'all exactly you know, you know it's all as uh, einstein said it's all relative so that's right. And and keep in mind, you know, we just got like, you know, new Twin Peaks episodes oh three years ago. So it doesn't quite oh feel God. like 30, 30 years, does it? So Seriously. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So uh, obviously uh, Twin Peaks is something that's been changing a lot of people's lives, including ours. So come on back a next long time. long time. Yep. Yeah. So come back for episode 72 of Ghostwood. 30 years later, uh, we'll talk the very first episode that aired on ABC back on April 8th, 1990. 
All right. So everybody come on back and we'll see you next time right here. Ghost with the Twin Peaks podcast. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you.